Lily and I are going to meet our next guest. Hey, 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 hey John. John. Hey, How Lily. are you doing? What's up, Lily? <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the Fan House. Thanks, man. It's awesome. I'm so glad you're doing the entrepreneur show. And we're going to help people become big money speakers. Let's do it. All right, let's go. Are you ready, baby? Oh, no. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hello and welcome once again to The Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, John Spencer Ellis, and my guest today is James Malinchek. How are you, sir? Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good. Good to be here. Thank you. So, you guys, quick backstory. Uh, James and I have been friends for a long time. If you recognize him, it's because he's probably spoken on one of the stages <laughs> somewhere in the world at some business conference that you've attended in some capacity. And uh, you may also recognize him from being one of the stars of ABC's Secret Millionaire. And he's also one of my coaches. So welcome, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad to be here, buddy, thank you. So you help entrepreneurs find their voice, become a professional speaker, and monetize being a speaker. Right. And so when someone wants to do that, a lot of people say they want to do it but then somehow they fall short or they don't get the training like you provide or, or they somehow they don't live that dream. What's the biggest reasons why people don't make that a reality? You know, I think they don't understand that there's two sides to this uh, reality, this dream, if you will. There's the message, the story, the how to advice, the making a difference in people's lives. And the flip side of the coin is there's this thing called the business. Mm -hmm. And when I started, you know, I'm so blessed to what I do now. I get to help others fulfill their dream of being a speaker, author, coach, trainer, consultant. But I never planned on this. Mm -hmm. I was just the guy that was one of them. I had I had the dream. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to speak. I want to impact people and make, make a difference. But I'd like to make a living doing it as well. And so when I focus just over here and I listen to a lot of folks who um, – I thought knew what they were talking about in certain associations that would say, you know, just have passion. Well, I had passion, <laughs> but I was making $7 an hour working in a video store trying to pay my rent. You know, they're saying, tell your story. But I'm like, well, okay, well, I'm in this video store. <laughs> There's nobody listening but me. I'm, so I'm walking around telling my story. And so what it was, the number one mistake is I think folks only focus on the one side, the message, <laughs> and don't understand that we are actually running a business. And what happens, sometimes people say, I just want to help. I just want to serve. And what I tell them is that the more you have, the more you can give because yeah. you can't give what you don't have because it actually defies the laws of physics. Oh, 100 percent. You know, when I was blessed to be on the show Secret Millionaire for ABC, you know, we had to put one hundred thousand dollars into an escrow account before uh, we filmed the show. And it wasn't like we got that money back eight months later, whenever mm -hmm. they run the sh ran the show. And um, if, if I didn't know how to monetize my message, find my voice, you know, as an entrepreneur, then I would never have uh, had that excess to put in that escrow account so that we give away to the charities. Right. And yeah, I think that's the one thing that a lot of folks get hung up on is they don't realize that, yeah, I want you to help people. I want you to change the world, make a difference, find your voice, live your, your mission of, you know, making a difference, but would also like you to get highly paid as well. <laughs> Sometimes people get paid a speaking fee, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, sometimes 100,000, which is fantastic. Other times there is a shared revenue model. You may offer something of value from the stage and you do a revenue share with the person who's creating the event. Can you talk a little bit about each of those options? Yeah, so there's uh, the traditional, and this is how I came up, was you know getting paid a fee to deliver a presentation. Once I figured out this business side, that's all I knew about speaking. And what happened was, uh, and, and you can be paid through colleges, universities, youth organizations, entrepreneur groups, corporations, associations, et cetera. And what happened was because I became really good at getting booked, I wasn't famous, I wasn't like a great speaker or anything like that. I just figured out the number one thing that matters in speaking you got to get to the people who actually put on events and get them to pick you. Okay. Forget everything else. That's the only thing. That's actually thing. pretty simple. It is. <laughs> and I just became, once I figured that out, I said, man, this is what I need to focus like 99% of my time on. And so what happened was then because of that, people would ask me to speak at their entrepreneur events. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to speak about? Well, talk about how folks can do the same thing. Tell their story, you know, 
help folks, but also get paid. And oh, by the way, we're not going to pay you to speak, but we want you to put together some sort of coaching program, mm -hmm. offer it, and then uh, we do a revenue share, which is pretty much 50-50. So that side of speaking is called speak and offer. Speak I don't even offer. like speak and sell. I, I think I sort of kind of coined the term speak and offer. The speak and sell almost makes people feel slack. They're, they're, they're waiting for it rather yeah. than waiting for something of value. Yeah, so you deliver value, you um, educate folks, you inform them, and then folks come to the inevitable conclusion in their mind that they want to take the next step with you and learn from you and then invest in your training, your online course, your coaching, your consulting, and then therefore the person who puts the event on gets a revenue share. Half to the person who put the event on, half to you as the speaker. Okay. And, and I will tell you, John, I can tell you many people who do the revenue share who make way more than they would ever make getting paid a fee. Let me ask you something. Here we are, Las Vegas yeah. Strip, right behind us, <laughs> right. The, the famous Bellagio, which was uh, robbed in the, in the movie Ocean's Eleven, my, one of my favorite movies of all time. We, we didn't do it. it no, 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 it wasn't us. It wasn't us. <laughs> if, if, if we did, we're not admitting it right now. But... A lot of a lot of people who do what we do, speak professionally, want to get a gig speaking somewhere in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, at a convention, there I think someone that was on an earlier episode we were taping today said there's like twenty three thousand mm -hmm. events, seminars, workshops, something like that in Vegas every year. Yeah. And I know this varies. This is a loaded blanket question, but if someone wants to be a speaker that gets booked in Las Vegas, what's the number one thing they need to do? So I'm actually in town today because I'm speaking at one of these conventions oh, I didn't know in that. two days. Okay, yeah. right, cool. <laughs> I'm speaking at one on uh, Friday in two days and then two days later, okay. Sunday. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but one of the reasons I moved to Las Vegas, gosh, 18 years ago mm -hmm. when I first located here was I got tired of flying around. I loved speaking. I loved helping people. I loved monetizing my message, my story, my how-to advice. But I got tired of the travel and, you know, doing the TSA Macarena, take your belt off, take your jacket off, take it, right? You know, and I just got tired of that. And so I, I saw what Wayne Newton did years ago. Mr. Las old Vegas. Old school residency. Old school residency. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was the Tropicana where he bedded down and he had like a 10-year deal with the Tropicana. Wow. And, people, and he would perform and do what he loved. But people would come to him and then he'd be in his bed every night. And I thought, mm, that's the way to do it. You know, we see all the entertainers now who do it. But Wayne really is the guy that kind of pioneered that 20 years ago. And so I said, wait a minute. There are 20,000 some conventions that go to Las Vegas every year. And by the way, not just Las Vegas. Wherever there's a destination area, Orlando, Dallas. Yeah, Orlando's big. Oh, Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. all throughout Los Angeles. You got San Diego. I mean, every place where there are hotels and conventions. And so... I figured it out, buddy. Figured it out a long time. I said, there's got to be a way to market one to many. I got to be able to do one thing and get to every convention coming to Vegas or to Honolulu or Salt Lake City. And so I'm about to give one of the biggest tips right here. I'm, I'm serious. This is very, 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 very Probably worth a lot, a worth a lot right. to you. There's something in every city called the Convention and Visitors Bureau, CVB. Convention and Visitors Bureau has... Uh, three primary roles. Number one, to attract convention business here. So the CBB, Convention and Visitors Bureau in Las Vegas, is trying to get convention business here versus Orlando, Dallas, San Diego. Mm -hmm. The second role is data tracking. You know, if you walk through the Vegas airport, you'll always see the big digitron, right, where it says 50 million people visited Vegas last year. Well, how do they get that data? It's through the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mm -hmm. And the third Ah, this is the this the secret right here, is to promote entrepreneurs who are members of the CVB, so that all those convention people do business with the associate members slash vendors. So you joined. So I just joined and became a vendor. And <laughs> watch this. When I did, I got thousands, five, six thousand conventions that were coming. As long as they were on the books, hmm. they get reported to the CVB. Because if a convention's coming to Caesar's Palace or Bellagio, which is right there. The data goes through the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Why? Number two, so they can track all the data, how many people and how much revenue is generated. So as a vendor, hmm. simply I market and go directly to all the conventions coming to Vegas for the next five, six, seven years. As long as, long as it's booked, it's running through the data. 
and I get them all. Interesting. And by the way, not just Vegas, you can get them anywhere. Uh, you know, it's funny. What, I, I looked at a lot of the uh, domains for Las Vegas speakers and all that kind of stuff. And I bought a few, but guess who owned all the other ones? <laughs> right, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I'm like, oh man, this was already taken. <laughs> what jerk took that? And I'm like, oh, it's my friend. I can't call him that jerk. But I'm just, I decided to give you like a virtual fist bump. I'm like, you beat me to it. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, a lot of the things, if you're looking for a Las Vegas speaker in the, the web domains, it's gonna it's gonna forward to either of our websites, <laughs> but that I'm gonna, I didn't I didn't think about that. That's brilliant. It's I'm, been one I'm, of my hidden secrets wow. for 18 years. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, guess what John's gonna do tomorrow? <laughs> Good. That's really really cool. All right. We have a lot more to share with you. Please stay with us. We're gonna be right back after this break. Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you. And sometimes you just need a coach, a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time. Welcome back to this next segment of The Entrepreneur Show. My guest today is James Malinchek, and we are talking about speaking and becoming a speaker and a professional speaker and a highly paid speaker, a big money speaker. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about how to put on your own event. Now, sometimes you may speak at someone else's event, you may be the keynote. Sometimes it's a multi-speaker event, but there is also another way of doing it. Actually, there's a lot of ways of doing it, but another way is to host your own event. But there are some potential roadblocks, hiccups, and challenges, but when you get it right, you can make a lot of money, serve a lot of people, and have a lot of fun. So what's the formula? So I have this, uh, you know, everybody, when I help them, a lot of folks I've helped, I've actually built their seminars. They've come to my house and I kind of map it out, that sort of thing. And everybody always wants to start with, let me tell you, James, what I'm going to teach. <laughs> right? I'm like, well, hang on a second. I said, before we go there, let's kind of go through my little three-point formula. And my three-point formula is P-B-E. And P stands for profit. So let's start with profit because, you know, I always say, look, the lights, the rental room, the LCD projector, all that stuff costs money. And if we need to start with profit and figure out how are we going to make a profit, make our expenses back, and then how are you going to, because I assume folks do a live event to teach and help, but also mm -hmm. to actually profit. Mm -hmm. So they want to start usually with, you know, what they're going to teach, the education, the curriculum. And I'm like, nah, nah let's, let, none of that matters unless we can figure out how to profit. So it's always P first. And that B is butts in seats <laughs> right here, what we're doing, right? <laughs> you know, you can have the greatest curriculum in the world. You can have the biggest heart and want to make a difference. But if you can't get people to register, and not only that, show up and put their butt in the seat, you're not going to have a chance to help people, and you're going to probably have a negative profit. <laughs> right? you're wow, yeah, not good. Right. And then the E is, how do we create an experience that people rave about? So that, uh, uh, like when you were at my event, John Spencer Ellis is on Facebook saying, this is one of the best speaker events I've ever seen. How do we create that? Not only for at your event, but then also uh, past the event so that people become your apostles and they just start promoting it because they had such a great experience, whether that's the curriculum that's taught or it's uh, certain guest speakers. Like you were one of my guest speakers. People loved you twice, actually, your guest Thank speaker. Thank you. That was an honor. Oh, they loved you. No, it was, you were just phenomenal. You gave so many nuggets and pieces of wisdom. And so, therefore, people became apostles for my event talking about John and talking about the other speakers. So it's, it's also the bonding, though, isn't oh, it? The yeah, bonding, yeah, the connection, yeah. the community. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, the events are never going away. You know, when when uh, like the internet really started to pick up, people were like, ah, there won't be any more conventions, right? There won't be meetings because everybody will just do it over the internet now. <laughs> but you know, you can't get this right over the right, internet. Exactly. You know, you can't get uh, the three H's. You can't get handshakes, hugs, and high fives over the internet. You only get that in person. And so events aren't going anywhere, mm -hmm. but you got to focus on P, profit, B, butts and seats, E, an experience that they love and rave about. Absolutely. 
Um, you know, it's funny. The only time I saw a dip in events is uh, after the financial crisis in about 2008. Mm -hmm. is I saw a little bit of a dip. And 9-11. And 9-11. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, because people yeah. didn't want to fly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, but those are major world events. Yeah. And, and you have no control over that. You just have to ride that wave. And guess what? Both times it's come back bigger and stronger and better than ever before. In fact, if you look behind us, um, you can see some cranes in the distance because they're building more hotels with more conference rooms yeah. and more meetings and more banquet halls because more people need speakers for their events. You know, it's crazy, John. I heard a stat and, and I, I didn't see like a research piece on this, but I've heard it numerous times that uh, on average, every day in the United States, just the United States alone, there are seven to 10,000 events that go on Wow, where you can need speakers. And people are like, well, how can, how can that be? Well, let's just look right here. You go into the Bellagio on one day and look at all the different events going on in the one event place, you know, the Bellagio on one day. And then you go to every single casino and hotel here. And then you go to Reno and you think Long Beach, you think Louisville, you think Dallas. I mean, then you think colleges and universities. There's probably one to 200 speakers a day, a, yeah, a day in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, the, the speaking industry is never going away. Events are never going away. And you hosting your own event where people get to come and learn from you and you impact their life and they build community and friendships with the folks in the audience, that's never, ever, ever going away because people will always want handshakes, hugs, and high fives. The Triple H. Interesting. And for me, learning how to speak more effectively and learning to enjoy that process and being able to share my message and add value to people and getting on stage and, and obviously the accolades and all this stuff, it does feel good. If someone says they don't like it, I don't know if they're being honest because it feels so good to make an incredible positive impact in someone's life. And then you get off stage afterwards and people say, oh my gosh, that moved me. Oh. And now and now because of that new information, because of this experience, I will live my life in a better way. Let me tell you the key takeaway for me. And they want to share that with you. And it's so it's so cool. It's such a neat feeling. Or, you know, I really didn't want to come to this event. My husband or wife dragged me and oh my gosh, my life has been I'm so glad I came here. I'm so glad I heard you speak. And you know, like you, John, I'm I'm still good people. This was six months ago from my last event and then a year from the first time you spoke yeah. and people still tell me the nuggets that you talked about when you were on stage. How cool is that? No, yeah, it's great. I mean, you, you just cannot put a price on that, you know, and then the fact that you can actually monetize that and then get highly paid for sharing your message, your story, your how to advice and making a difference in people's lives and making the community better, the world better. I mean, it's, I, I call it the greatest profession in the world. I want to talk a little bit about speaking technique, okay? <laughs> uh, because I know you, all, you and I, I'm going to I'm going to mimic you here for sure. a minute. When you're making fun of of how a speaking program, I won't mention them by name, says you have to walk into B formation, you come back to neutral, and then you do this and you pause and do a beat here and blah blah blah. And you become it's robotic. Very, very robotic. It's very, it's very <laughs> lame uh, '80s dance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, in closing off this segment, tell me, tell me, like two or three things that people should be doing uh, for their actual speaking ability that they often miss. So the very first thing I always try to teach folks to do is forget about yourself. People are like, well, I'm nervous, and what if I mess up? I, it's about you. It should be about the audience. Mm -hmm. If you always lead, so look, when we're born and we come into this world, we get a bib placed under our chin, and we get programmed to go through life like that, that we should be taking from people because people are giving to us. In essence, we're taking and what I say is if you really want to get ahead in life, you take that bib off from around your neck and you drape it over your forearm and you approach people like you are a server in the finest dining establishment. How can I help people? How can I serve people? That's how you take the stage. That's how you shoot a video. What can you do to serve? It's not about you, number one. It's about the audience. Mm -hmm. Number two, only talk about things you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fake it till you make it. No, that is one of the... That's a, worst piece of advice that you can have as a presenter you know talk about things you know that you're that's passionate that will help the audience don't try to like inject things that you read in the paper that day you know you know get good be you know actors do the same movements over and over 
right? So as singers, same concerts over and over because they get good at it. So only talk about what you know and remember that uh, you're there for the audience. And the very last thing is stop worrying about all this mechanical stuff. Yeah. You know, I used to do that and I would freeze up. Like, am I, wait, did I do too many hand gestures or did I not look at everybody? And I would forget what the heck I'm supposed to say. Here's what I always say. All speaking is, is you have something to say that will help people and you stand up and you say it to help them. Yeah. I don't care where my hands are. I don't care about all that stuff. I just have a message that I want to impact people with. Yeah. Look right here. I'm using, I know someone's critiquing me that I'm going like this too many times. I don't care. Hopefully someone's benefiting. <laughs> Before we go on break, I just want to make note of something. Uh, I, I won't say names here, but about a year ago, you and I spoke spoke at an event in San Diego and it wasn't the organizers fault it was it was the people that were doing the AV they had they had some issues and and fortunately while I was on stage I just let you know it worked flawlessly but, but, <laughs> but, but when you were on stage I mean literally it, there was just one thing after another through the, the lights and the audio dropped out and it happened like that and and you just cut the microphone and you got off the stage and you stood in front of the audience and projected to the audience. And I'm sure it's a little tough for people in the back to hear, sure. although you, you belted it out. But you didn't. And I, I understandably, if you're frustrated, it's, it's that's reasonable. But you just kept going. And I, I just thought that was really cool. I was noticing that. It, the thing is, I, be, being a speaker and being right. a student of speaking, I was paying more attention to how you handled that crisis. Right rather than the message for that moment. So I lost the message, right. but for me being a student, I was watching how you handled that. And you know, that comes from 3000 presentations and just learning, Yeah. you know? So one of the reasons I got off the stage was to direct people's attention onto me and off of the AV folks who mm -hmm. didn't kind of have it together. Yeah. You know, there was times where like they jacked up the PowerPoint screen. So I jump in the audience, I'll go walking back so people's heads have to turn. So they're not looking at the screens flickering. Mm -hmm. You know, and that just comes from stage time, you know, of learning to, you know, okay, let, let me give them some time. They're not bad people. They just made a mistake and maybe they didn't run through the check properly or didn't put the batteries mm -hmm. in the, you know, the, the microphone. Yeah, pack. but you brought a, a, a set. This is okay. We're going to close. <laughs> we're going to close the segment with this tip because I was astonished that you did that. So yeah. it was the battery pack for your lavalier mic. Yeah went dead, but you had your own batteries yeah. in your pocket. Yeah, I have a checklist of things I take, you know, especially if you're at a big event, you know, um, especially if you're like one of these conventions where there's 5,000 people, mm -hmm. you know, the audience doesn't deserve to have that stuff happen mm -hmm. to them. They deserve to have a 60 minute or 90 minute message that helps them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I have, you learned this from doing this for years. I have my checklist of things I got to take. Take extra batteries in case the mic goes out. You know, mm -hmm. you only learn that from stage time. That's so funny. I, I just thought it was, it was very smooth. I love it. All right, you guys, we're going to take our second and last commercial break. When we come back, we'll have our final segment, and we're going to teach you how to monetize being a professional speaker. Stay with us. Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you, and sometimes you just need a coach, a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time. Welcome back to this third and final segment of The Entrepreneur Show. My guest today is James Malinchak, the big money speaker coach. So in this last segment, we're going to talk about how do you parlay your speaking gigs, your speaking business into other things that allow you to have ongoing, reoccurring, predictable, and hopefully growing income as well. Speaking is awesome, it's rewarding, uh, it is personally enriching, and also there's only so much you can do, and so you need to leverage that. Also, if you are doing a 
speaking gig where you're able to offer something from the stage, you need to have a program, product, service, coaching, mentoring program that you can actually offer. Right. Yeah. So let's talk about that. How do people monetize speaking beyond speaking itself? Well, I always say, look, if you have a, a presentation that you can talk for 60 minutes, record it, transcribe it, you got a book. Take that recording, turn it into an audio. This is just basic, right? Yeah. You can have a written part of your presentation, which becomes your book. You can have the audio version of it, right, to stream online. Then you get the video version. Mm -hmm. So you have three products right there with one speech. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you want to go more in depth with a deep dive, then you can start creating modules for an online course, mm -hmm. or you can offer a coaching or consulting program where you help folks go deeper with the information in your presentation. And it doesn't matter if it's mindset, mm -hmm. motivation, or you know, deep entrepreneur business building tactics. I know folks that actually coach people on mindset. I know folks that are just coaches who hold people accountable. And then I know folks who, like yourself, you help entrepreneurs build businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's just, people get all freaked out about how do we take <laughs> our, our message and how do we you know, make more courses from it. Well, just record your presentation. Right, you can always, if, if, you, can if you can write something and do something in an hour, People have more questions. Think about the follow-up questions that they have. Then think about the derivatives of it and the different verticals. And then those are the different modules and sub-modules and segments of that. Right, right. yeah. Uh, and, and you could look at the top 10 you know, questions. And you can, have, you can go deep on each of the 10 if you really wanted to. Yep. And you get 10 modules. Absolutely. And I always say, look, if, you could, if I sat down with you one-on-one -on, -one on a couch and asked you a question about a challenge I have with your topic, mm -hmm. you could answer, right? Mm -hmm. And then if I asked another to go deeper, you can answer. Next thing you know, we've been talking for 30 or 40 minutes. That's a module. I was just thinking about something <laughs> as you're saying this. Uh, our friend, Jack Canfield, yeah. um, the Chicken Soup for the Soul is a series of stories of overcoming tragedy and yeah. triumph and, and, and whatever challenges. Right. I was just thinking, Think about when, when you get off stage, we talked about this in the, in the earlier segment, when you get off stage and people say, oh, because of this, or now because of this, I'll be able to blank. Those could be stories that bolster, support what your program is about. That could be modules in a book, is just telling those success stories sure. and, and having them as parables. You know how I did my first product now that I'm thinking way back 25 years ago was this. I just interviewed various people, and that became my first product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back then, it was audio cassettes. I did, <laughs> I did, I did, I did the same thing. No, I hate. Look, we, we, we've been doing this a long time. My first program was also an audio cassette. I thought, and, I thought it was 8-track. No, no, come on now. Come on. It wasn't 8-track. It was a cassette. And, and in fact, it was red. I got like a translucent red cassette. And I remember they silk screened on the words, and then it started. It faded when you rubbed it with your finger. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm telling you. We used to, I used to, I used to, I used to get labels at like Office Max and run them through a bubble jet inkjet printer and stick my own on. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah. But but it started as interviews, <laughs> so why couldn't you just sit down and chat with someone for fifteen minutes, record it, mm -hmm. and do that ten times? You've got mm -hmm. ten. You got ten modules right there. That yeah. was my first course. Just interview people. I think people overthink it. Yeah. And the other thing that I've, I've noticed is, as I've helped people with this sort of thing is when you've done something your whole life, it's so easy for you. You don't realize that you're awesome because right. you have a skill and it's so you're just thinking, but that's so easy. It's not to me because I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And it's not to a lot of other people, but you have brilliance. And all you have to do is figure out how to systematize and package and distribute that brilliance based on your speech and then offer that to the people who attend your event or, or offer it online as well. So uh, check this out. Many, many years ago, I, I was for, first going to start PowerPoint, <laughs> Okay, using PowerPoint on my laptop, and I had no clue how to do it. I actually flew somebody from Houston, Texas, who was a friend of mine, <laughs> to Las Vegas, paid for his flight, uh, had him stay at my place, and I had him drive me to the store, pick the 
PowerPoint program off the uh, shelf, load it onto my computer and show me how to do it, and then I pay him a fee on top of it. Oh my gosh. So in essence, that was a coaching program. Now here's the point. Very basic. Like he, he told me, look, I can tell you how to do it over the phone. I'm like, I don't, I don't want you to tell me over the phone. I don't know how to do this. So it may be simple for you, but like this is worth me investing in yes. for me. Mm-hmm. You know, so don't overthink it. I mean, this was very basic. So there's stuff that someone, you know, watching, it might be very basic to, to that person, yeah. but to you and we, I and to as thousands of others. As you're saying this, I'm willing to bet. Now, to me, learning PowerPoint would be like watching paint dry. <laughs> so to be all super excited about that, it's not my thing. But I'm willing to bet that there's someone that makes multiple six figures a year teaching people how to do PowerPoint in live presentations or workshops and then sells online programs sure. to teach people the advanced skills. Well, there was a guy years ago on television, you could buy uh, his infomercial course, and he was called the uh, Video Professor. Yeah, I remember. He I remember very that. basic yeah. stuff about computers. Wow. You know, so you have stuff within you that people would love to pay you to learn, even if you think it's the most simplistic stuff. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most important things is just realize that you have skills and abilities that go far beyond your hour presentation. Oh, yeah. and, and that is the foundation for it. And then when you get off stage and people ask you those questions or they have follow up or they say, will it work in this capacity? That can be a completely different vertical as well. You can say, wow, I've been doing, I've been teaching my lecture for uh, diesel mechanics, but I, I, I could tweak it and now it works for people who are into uh, solar power cars. Yeah. Right, I'm just really making that up. But you get the idea, there's different ways of doing it. Just to put this in perspective, I had a client uh, a few years back who taught quilting. <laughs> she literally taught quilting and she would like set up a camera and record herself quilting and teach it and people would buy her quilting DVDs. So I helped her create wow. a quilting coaching program and a quilting boot camp. So people would come to her quilting event and then at the quilting <laughs> event they would pay several thousands of dollars to be in a year long program where they would visit with her three times a year in a group setting and she would teach them how to do these advanced quilting patterns. So don't tell me right. you can't uh, teach and you can't get paid and monetize your no- knowledge. This was quilting. Yeah, whatever it is, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. One last thing is I think people often think incorrectly that, well, I like it, but I'm not sure if there's enough other people who like this. And I'm not sure if there's enough other people would want to hear me speak about this. Here's the easiest litmus test in the world to see if your idea has any merit. Go to Facebook and look at fan pages and then look at groups. And then do go to meetup.com and do the same. And then go to LinkedIn and do the same. And you will see that there are people who have groups and fan pages and things like that that are almost identical, if not exactly what you're interested in. Mm-hmm. So it, it's validation that you're not alone, which is always nice, mm-hmm. and that people want what you have to offer. And let me share one thing that holds a lot of folks back from monetizing their message, whether it's speaking or online course or whatever. Don't you don't compare yourself to others. You know, you see John uh, out there and, you know, he's got this this presence. Right. And you go, oh, I can never be like him. Well, stop comparing yourself to John or don't compare yourself to me or Tony Robbins or Jack Canfield. Just be you and just put your stuff out because there are people who will resonate with you better than they resonate with me Mm -hmm. or with John. Mm -hmm. And if you don't put that out and you don't share your gifts, your message, your talents, then you won't be impacting people and you won't monetize it. So one of the things I did in the beginning is I used to compare, well, I'm not as good as this person. Look how amazing she Mm -hmm. is and I'm just getting started. And so I stopped from moving forward because of that. Forget that. I There's, did that as well. Did you? Yeah, it's, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, I think I, I, I have a feeling a lot of us go through that. And uh, you know what's funny is one of the people that I would compare myself to is, is Jack Canfield. Oh, wow. Because I, I respect him so much sure. and he's such a great guy. And uh, actually, some other coaches that I work with, they said, yeah, but uh, Jack doesn't have three black belts and Jack hasn't done the Iron Man right. and Jack right. doesn't own a large association. I said, yeah, but he's Jack Canfield. They right. sh- they sh- he said, You're not listening to me. Right. <laughs> but you, 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 like, you stand on your own merit. Yeah. But I, yeah, I did that because I respect Jack and I appreciate what he's done for our industry. Yeah. And just remember, share your message, your right. information, because it's you, it's your story. Mm-hmm. And there are people that need to hear what you have to offer. And therefore you can monetize that and get highly paid.
Yeah. All right, you guys, you just had the boom, the knowledge bomb <laughs> dropped. <laughs> Look, note the special effects. Uh, incredible. Thank you so hey, thank much. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate James Malinchak, how do people learn about you? Oh, it's very easy. Just go to www.bigmoneyspeaker.com. Bigmoneyspeaker.com. Easy. And, and it's, a, it's a great event. R truly, truly phenomenal. So, you guys, thank you so much. You've just experienced the Entrepreneur Show. I'm John Spencer Ellis. Once again, that's James Malinchak. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is John Spencer Ellis, and I want to help you reach all of your personal, professional, physical, and financial goals. You have greatness within you. And sometimes you just need a coach, a trainer, and a mentor to help you realize your full potential. Since the age of 12, I have immersed myself in the study and practice of maximizing human potential, physically, mentally, personally, professionally, and financially. I believe you and I have so much to offer, to experience, and to give to the world. It's time for you to step into your brilliance and shine like you're supposed to right now. I invite you to learn how I can help you reach your goals and dreams. Thanks for your time.